Yeah, shout out to my guy Ryan. Uh, he said on Twitter, anybody else ever turn the volume all the way up to hear those quiet Ravens interviews and then switch to engraving vids and had your eardrum blown off? Nah, me neither. Well, is that quiet enough for you there, Ryan? Is that quiet enough there for you, buddy? Anyway, you two team keep it clean. What's going on? <laughs> it's like a great video with another video. And in this video, I, I saw a lot of y'all agreed too. A lot of y'all agreed. And I'm sure a lot of y'all going to be getting in the comment section like, yeah, hey, that same thing happens to me too. Well, hey, may maybe I just don't want y'all to fall asleep. I don't know what it is. But anyway, the Ravens, who have obviously had a very busy offseason. And there's just been one thing happening after another. But a lot of positives. Because, again, like we talked about yesterday, they had a practice where only one person missed practice. And that's somebody who's not even expected to play for the next couple of weeks, that being Travis Jones. But everybody practiced. Everybody, including Ronnie Stanley. Um, but even with everybody practicing, the Ravens still have some holes. And one of the holes that they have is uh, at outside linebacker. Um, right now, uh, their outside linebackers, their healthy outside linebackers are Justin Houston uh, and Adafi away. Now, if this is Madden, you could have them boys rushing the passer all day, every day, but it's not. Uh, so they need breaks, they need time off, um, and they need some time to sort of catch their breath. Um, now, uh, Tyus Bowser, that would be another option, but he's out for the first four games. David Ajabo, he's on injury reserve, um, so he's out at least the first uh, three or four games, but we expect him to miss uh, more. Um, Steven Means, he's an option. Brent Urban, he's more a DN. Steven Means more a DN too. But anyway, Ravens, they, they need some outside linebackers. Now, um, one other option that they do have that I, I think that they would probably actually use, depending on how things go, uh, will be Malik Harrison. Because this offseason, they've been trying Malik Harrison both at uh, inside and outside linebacker, even though that is scary territory. Because, again, if they're trying you at all these different spots, then that means they don't really have a spot for you. They don't have a certain spot for you. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. But it's nice to have that as an option. And you got to think, well, I got to think, with Patrick Queen, with Josh Bynes, uh, with Christian Welch, and even with Josh Ross. Uh, that Malik Harrison, if they do need somebody else to be an outside linebacker, they'd be like, all right, Leek, you up. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. But the Ravens were like, you know what? We had this guy in for a visit yesterday, and he impressed enough to where we're going to sign him. Uh, so they did sign uh, Kyler Fackrell, 30-year-old, um, 6'5", 245. Uh, so he, he's not a little fella. Uh, but he, um, they signed him to the practice squad today after working him out yesterday. And this was always the expectation that they were going to sign an outside linebacker. I know a lot of us, including myself, we were thinking it, it may be more of a uh, sort of sexy pick or, I mean, sexy signing with a, a, a bigger name. But, hey, if Fackrell can come in and get the job done, all right, cool. Let, let, let's see what he got. And this would be somebody who, ah, it is a big time numbers game. So we'll see how it all works out. But this could be somebody I could see getting called up for that first game uh, from the practice squad because I believe the rules is, are that the with the practice squad players, you can call them up. Oh, it's been a while. My mind is rusty, so correct me if I'm wrong, which I probably will be. That's why I love y'all because y'all correct me respectfully. But the practice squad rules uh, are you can call up a practice squad player either two or three times before you have to activate them to the uh, roster. You have to put them on the roster. Now, if you don't want to put them on the roster, then you would have to release them. Then they would have to clear waivers. Then you can sign them back to the practice squad again and repeat the process. So, but let me know if I'm wrong. I believe that's it, though. But anyway, um, just looking at him, he's played for the Packers. That's where I knew him from. I knew this name that he was from the Packers, but I did not know he played for these other teams as well. He also played for the Giants, the Chargers, and he also played for the Ravens. Favorite offseason team to grab players from this year. He played for those Las Vegas Raiders. R really brief stint, though. They signed him this offseason, and uh, I mean, obviously, it didn't work out because now he's a Raven. So, I mean, but I mean, shout out to Demarcus Robinson. They signed him this offseason. Didn't work out. He's a Raven. Drizzy Drake, they signed him what? Last offseason, I think. Didn't work out. He's a Raven. And now with Fackrell, he continues the process. So looking at his numbers over the past couple of years, um, 
they have been whoa he let's just let's let's go back let's go back to his rookie year and see how the process has been rookie year 2016 he had two sacks uh then 2017 he had three sacks so there was a little steady increase there was that consistency uh and then in 2018 he said oh whoa hey i'm here y'all and he got 10 and a half sacks and that was his career best uh because the following year in 2019 he had one sack, and then 2020 with the Giants, he had four sacks. Then 2021 uh, with the Chargers, he had three sacks. So um, he's, and, and again, by the numbers and by the name, you know that he has been a, sort of a, a role player. He's been a role player. He hasn't been this premier pass rusher. He hasn't been this top guy uh, when he was with the Packers or Giants or Chargers. Uh, he wasn't the guy at pass rusher. And hey, that's fine. The Ravens, they have their the guys. They have their Adafi away. He's expected to be the guy, and he's expected to be that guy. He's expected to be one of them guys because Adafi away, like he literally has everything that it takes to be like that. Uh, so we'll see how that goes and how that works itself out. Um, but with Fackrell, again, role player, role player, no pressure, come in for a couple plays. Well, I wouldn't expect him to be out there a boatload of snaps or anything like that unless, <laughs> which I wouldn't be complaining about, unless the Ravens, they blowing somebody out. That that would be the only way. Unless Ravens up by this huge score and they like, hey, starters, hey, y'all go, y'all boys go chill on the sideline. This game is over. Even though on the flip side, that can also happen if the Ravens were getting blown out, if they were getting just dog walked and they were getting whooped and they were like, all right, starters, y'all just go ahead and sit this one out. This this is over and this is ugly. So hopefully it's not the latter. But anyway, this uh, it, it's just a move. I, I know a lot of people have been talking uh, Jason Pierre-Paul. See, but with, with Jason Pierre-Paul, and I wouldn't have been mad if they signed him at all. Uh, you wouldn't have heard me complaining not one bit Especially him being from Florida I know he's from Deerfield Beach So it would have been another Florida Raven He would have fit right in He would have fit right in um, But with him um, A lot of Ravens fans were hoping and expecting Maybe maybe, maybe Ravens signed JPP um, He got Super Bowl experience uh, He is a and He a two time Super Bowl champion Because I'm pretty sure he was on that Bucks team With the Super Bowl I believe I think so I think so, but I don't remember for sure, but I do think he was. But anyway, um, but the thing that what the, one of the biggest reasons why a lot of Ravens fans were like thinking about him extra because Ravens brought him in for a visit. They brought him in for a visit like maybe a month and change ago. So J Jason Pierre-Paul was in there and then he was like all on Instagram and stuff. And he was like, yeah, I like these vibes, baby. And then the Ravens were like, oh. Oh, oh, he posted the locker room on Instagram. Oh, he liked these vibes? Okay, watch this. Actually, don't watch this because we're not signing you. I, I don't know what happened, though. I don't know what happened. Because may, maybe um maybe JPP gave them uh, Greg Sinat vibes. Remember him? Remember Greg Sinat? I, I think he was like a six or seven round draft pick. Big, big, big offensive lineman. And he had broke his foot. He had some, something. And he posted it on social media. And Ravens got heated. Ooh, they got heated. And then... That was that was the beginning of the end for him in Baltimore. I think he ended up going to like the Kansas City Chiefs or something like that. I forgot where he went after that. But anyway, that's just a little side note. So anyway, Mr. Fackrell, Kyler, um, welcome to the squad. Uh, so hey, I, I didn't even know that. Um, I didn't even realize this. So that that he was the first Kyler in the NFL before Mr. Murray. Just a little bonus piece of information right there for anybody. Who cared? I know none of y'all do, but that's okay. I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all team. Keep it clean. Y'all keep being great. Keep being the great people that you are. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. We out.